Hey everyone, you're listening to InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy. We're chatting about how to get the most out of life and covering a ton of interesting topics. So there's sure to be something for just about everyone. Let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm your host Jeff. And I'm Amy. And who are you? Who am I? I'm Jeff. No, that's the topic for this podcast. Oh, <laughs> is it the, the who song? Like, who are you? Are we going to get sued now? I, I think we are. I don't know. Uh-oh. I think that was just not good enough for us to get sued. I know. That was pretty horrible singing. <laughs> no. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We've got a really exciting one for you today. We really do. It is all about who are you and also why does that matter? I think we'll have an interesting discussion around how you can sort of figure out who are you, who are the many layers that make up the person that you are, and also how can you use that information to live a happier life? Would you say that everyone sort of wonders who they are at some point during their lives? I think so. Yeah. Maybe not dogs. I mean, especially through your adolescence, right? You're like, I don't know what I'm doing, who I am. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, that's just What's going on? Yeah. Which way I'm going? Years of chaos. Yeah. Years of chaos in adolescence. The quote for this episode is from Yoko Ono. And it is, you change the world by being yourself. Ah, it's so true. Don't be fake, because the world will never be changed if you're fake. Well, and I like... That's kind of what she's saying there. Well, I, I like, and I like that it stresses the importance of knowing who you are. Yeah. Because you can't be yourself if you don't know who yourself is. Yeah, it's important to know who you are. I mean, how else, how are you going to be able to uh, conduct yourself in modern day society if you don't even really know who you are and be and be legitimate be validated in who you are you know what i mean well we define ourselves in a lot of different ways when we were preparing for this episode i know you and i chatted a bit about this but depending on the context of where you are the situation who you're with you define yourself differently so for instance if you're traveling and you're meeting new people often we would define ourselves by our nationality yeah. You know, the first question might be, where oh, right. are you from? We did talk about this, and uh, and you were asking me, okay, well, how would you uh, introduce yourself to, like, a new group of people you've never met or whatever? Like, what would be your defining identity? And I, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to say, hi, I'm, I'm a dad. I'm, I'm, I'm Jeff. And it seems weird, but I do kind of consider myself, like, an artist. But it seems weird to label myself as an artist to people I don't know for some reason. Well, I mean, in the context of meeting somebody in a playground, yeah. you know, if you are there with our son and they have their kids, you yeah. would say, I'm Hux's dad. I, I vaguely remember my parents doing like being on a trip or, or somewhere and they actually did make up their own identity. They had met an, another couple who were really pretentious, just completely full of themselves at, throughout the conversation. And I think my parents just made up these crazy identities for themselves oh well why not i mean it's fun right oh yeah no it was was a great story awesome story hope you enjoyed it listeners (laughs) (laughs) but we talked about how you define yourselves based on your context if you were at a party and you went with a friend you'd say i'm so-and-so's friend or if you're at your partner's work party you might say you know i'm the husband of that person right yeah some people define themselves by their career yeah. titles can become very important that is usually the go-to i would say like if someone if i met somebody at a party through mutual friends and they said oh what do you do i'd say oh i'm i'm a group home worker you know that, that is kind of what i do so i mean you know for well, work it is, it is the question right it's you know it's the how's the weather it's that type of yeah superficial question that people ask is they don't really know what to say yeah. they don't just come up and say who are you yeah, I know. You know, as they meet you, um, they might say, you know, how do you know so and so if you're at a mutual friends gathering? Yeah. A lot of times people will say, what do you do? And it's small if- talk that defines a person in a way sometimes when you first get to know somebody. Well, yes. And uh, some people define themselves by their hobby. You know, yeah. they may be very passionate about golfing and so they consider themselves a golfer and will proudly introduce themselves as that to most people they meet or or an artist like you mentioned and it made me think back to in high school when people had cliques they we really defined ourselves by the people that we surrounded ourselves with so there was 
you know, a group that were the jocks. Yeah. Or the, the nerds. The theater crowd. The theater crowd. The skater, headbangers. Skaters. Skaters. You're right. Maybe yeah. the headbangers and the skaters are the same crowd. I don't <laughs> Quite know. Often. I'm sure every high school had their own. But we were very much a part of that, right? Wanting to fit into that particular group and that form part of our identity. Yeah, I think that's a natural progression for people when they're teenagers and stuff, you know, to want to try and identify other groups and then try to fit into one as well. And know? I think that's part of trying to figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's part of uh, that adolescent chaos we talked about earlier. Yeah. And, you know, it really shows that we aren't who we were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, who we are is evolving. No, we change through time for sure. We do. For the better, I'd like to think. I'd like to think so Some of so us as for well. the worse. <laughs> but we don't hang around with those people. You're looking at me. <laughs> and I thought to myself, why, why does this matter? Why did I want to do this particular topic for our podcast episode? And I reflected back on a conversation I had when I was on a girl's trip. And we were talking about the idea of when your children move out of your home, when they grow up and go off and do their own thing and you retire, then what is left is really just you. Yeah. You know, those are two major Empty nests. defining defining elements of yourself, right? You get to it's, really find out who you are at the... Well, I mean, if you didn't already know. I'd like to think by our age, we, we know who we are to a degree. <laughs> well, Maybe not, though. I don't know. Some days I feel like I'm still figuring it out. Changes from day to day. <laughs> And so why do I feel that that's important? Well, a lot of times that can lead to negative feelings. There are people who retire and completely lose a sense of self, a sense of purpose. Uh, Depression can be really frequent. That's true. After people retire, they just don't don't know what to do with themselves if they don't have a career to define them. Or after divorce, when they were always tied up Mm -hmm. who they were with alongside another person, a particular group, then, you know, how do they figure out how to exist in a new scope and a new environment. So for those reasons, I, I feel it is important to have a, a strong sense of self so that you can handle what life throws at you or those major life milestones and, and not, you know, see it as a negative, but just something that right. you're moving through and, and staying true to yourself as you do it. And when I say true to yourself, I'm going to use a catchphrase that is used so often now. Uh, it's to be authentic. To be authentic. And we just did an episode, episode 107. Um, If you want to check it out, it's on ways to stop caring what people think of you. And in that episode, we talked about your authentic voice. And uh, Tim Urban's Wait But Why blog, which I often quote on our podcast, talks about the importance of finding your authentic voice. And the fact that it doesn't sound like it would be a hard thing to do, but it really can be. And it does take some reflection to sort of sift through the web of what other people's thoughts and opinions are of you. What are some ways you can find your authentic self? Well, I'm glad you asked, Jeff. I know. (laughs) I'm right on cue. Well, one of the ways is you can start by thinking about the people you spend time with and which of them you actually like the most. And I think a lot of that'll tell you a lot about yourself and, you know, who you are, because we often are around those who have similar, yeah. you know, values, interests uh, That's true. to what we have. I mean, we just uh, navigate toward those people. And I think particularly during the pandemic, when we are forced to choose our, our bubbles or our pods or whatever, you know, small select group of people you could be around, depending on where you're, where in the world you're listening to our podcast from, I'm sure different terms are used. Yeah, even the people that we chose to 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 talk to uh, through video through zoom or whatever right like it was just a select few people that we we did that with for some reason well i think i think everybody really started to think back or take a different view of who they were spending their time with and who they actually missed yeah and who they didn't miss i guess because that would be more important. Who, who didn't you miss? And it'll be interesting once we we're starting to gather again. I know that people are getting vaccinated. Life's getting back to more normal mm-hmm. than it has been for a long time. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see which friendships, you know, stand the test of time, get picked up again, and which ones are just sort of left uh, left in the wind. You get a bit of a reality check throughout the pandemic as far as like, you know, who you really do want to spend your time with for sure that makes sense 
And some of the other questions that you can ask yourself about if you're looking to find your authentic self, you think about how you spend your own leisure time. Right. You know, what do you do that you truly enjoy? Are there things that you regularly spend money on? Mm-hmm. Are there things that you spend money on that it doesn't really feel comfortable for you? It doesn't really ring true for you, but you do it for other reasons. And, you know, in, in that case, you're not being authentic. How does your gut tell you you really feel about your relationship or about the job you're in? Mm-hmm. And I, I found this question interesting. You know, what's your true political opinion? Do, do you even care? Do you pretend to care about things that you really don't even have an opinion That's right. about? Do you secretly have an opinion on a political or a moral issue that you don't ever voice because people you know will be outraged? Secret Trump lovers. <laughs> yeah, you never know where the secret Trump lovers are in hiding. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, some people like to express their opinion just for the express purpose of outraging others that's true that happens too people do that online all the time you know i have no no time for that stuff though really i try not to no we just every once in a while we get into the through. fray i know we? well more of, it's more <laughs> of a spectator sport for us yeah <laughs> though there's when we talk about authentic voice there are other cliche phrases i guess that you can use to describe the, the process if it makes more sense to you but you know the idea of finding yourself or soul searching but it's exactly that type of process that you have to do to find your authentic voice. And that becomes part of really figuring out who you are. It must be uh, a really good feeling when and if one actually does find their authentic voice. And like, oh, finally, this is who I am. This is who I am. I feel like I'm there. <clears throat> yeah. Do you? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, th- I think so. You know, If lived- you'd asked me 10 years ago, I... Don't think I would have been. But you know what? Ten years from now, I might have said, I might say, you know what? I thought I had my authentic voice in my 40s, but I really didn't know what the heck was going on. But now I understand more now. <laughs> I, I would think, though, like like we said earlier, your authentic voice constantly changes as you grow older and you get different philosophies and your cosmology on the world changes. And I just find that you never really truly have a 100% authentic self because it's constantly changing. Well, I don't know. but it's your authentic self in the moment. In the moment, right. So it's sort of keeping up with those changes to so you stay validate tuned in. Your own, you validate your self-authenticity, I guess, right? You, you're the only one that can do that. Of course, yes. Yeah. And I and we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that as we move through. Yeah. But I'm getting to the definition portion of this episode and Jeff would have heard me playing the pronunciation of this oh, right. word. I did hear that. I was like, what are you what is that? <laughs> and the word it's a Japanese term from the Zen tradition and it's kensho. Kensho. And ken means seeing and sho means nature or essence. It means seeing one's true nature. True nature. And I, li- I like this definition for this episode because I think when we talk about who are you, it is your true nature yeah. and, and trying to find that. So again, that's Ken show. It's interesting because being finding your, your, your true authenticity is important for yourself, of course. You know, you, you want to know who you are, but you want to also be uh, authentic to the people around you. You don't want to be authentic to yourself and then fake to others. You know, I think I think we see that a lot these days, you know, with some of the people we watch on TV and stuff, you know? <laughs> well, that's true. And I think people will act differently depending on who yeah. they're with. I'd like to think that I'm fairly consistent in my personality, Same. understanding that there are times when obviously you're more reserved in right. maybe the, the colorful language language you choose based on your audience. But I like to think that if somebody meets me in my work environment and in my personal environment, like, that they would see a very similar, they yeah. were, there wouldn't be any surprises. I would come across the exact same It's like same finding your, 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 your self-authenticity is the first step to actually opening up your life and being authentic overall to, with everything. You know? Right. Anyway, well, I, and I've I've been around people who who aren't who aren't that way, you mm-hmm. know, and it it stands out really quite glaringly when people act differently depending on who they're around. Maybe yeah. if they're around people that they feel they need to impress, yeah, uh, versus people they just feel more comfortable with. That's right. 
There's a LinkedIn article that was written by Robert Liu, and it was all about answering the question, who are you? And he suggests that you start by decoding your personality and your core values. So you need to ask yourself what's most important to you, what makes you happy. And to figure out your values, you need to consider what's most important in your life. And then you let your values define you. Mm -hmm. And they are who you are. That makes sense. So when I read that article, I I just had come across that in recent weeks on LinkedIn. It made me think back to a book I read by Tony Robbins called Awaken the Giant Within. And uh, it's a massive book and it's full of so much information. But I remember one particular chapter around values. And I want to talk a bit about values in detail because I feel it's an important process that you can work through to figure out a little bit more about who you are, get more in touch with your authentic self. And Tony Robbins actually takes the importance of values even further and says that values guide our every decision and therefore our ultimate destiny. Hmm. So if we want to have the deepest level of life fulfillment, we can achieve it in only one way, and that's by deciding what we value most in life and what our highest values are, and then we need to commit to live by them every day. I think most people do that, though, don't they? No, I don't. I think as we move through this, you'll you'll okay. see that the, it's not as straightforward as what we think it what we think it is. All right, it's it's sometimes hard to visualize or conceptualize another person's perception, too. Like you only have your own, right? So I kind I tr- I've tried to live by my values my whole life to a degree. At least I think I have. I don't okay. know. Continue on and we'll see. Well, yes, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to test you on that. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so when we see people who are living their values, we often recognize that as somebody who has uh, a lot of integrity. Okay. You know, that's when you see people that... I'm out. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> but there are definitely people in our lives that seem to have more integrity than others. Yeah. Would you agree to that? I would agree to that. <laughs> I would agree to that, that some people have more integrity. But how do you define integrity, though? Is that just like uh, they live their values and they stick by them and they protect them and and their good values? Well, basically? yeah. So it, it's it's exactly how as I, I just recently defined it. There you go. <laughs> See, it must, I must have you know, soaked that in through osmosis. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, when you when you know your highest ideals and you you live by those ideals every day. Okay, yeah. You that's, know, you're, that's true, me. you're true to yourself. Your what you feel inward, who you are, is what you express outward to the world. That's me. And it's except consistent, and people know what to expect. I take Saturdays off, so that's me except for on Saturdays except for on Saturdays I don't live my values on Saturdays I live someone else's values I mean it all forms part of your character and your character is the most important thing right your right. reputation is what other people think about you mm-hmm. but your character is who you actually are right and so let's talk a little bit more about values and why they're so important let's do it and Tony Robbins actually says the biggest tragedy in most people's lives are that many people know what they want to have but they have no idea who they want to be. Yeah, that's true. You got to figure out who you want to be before you get everything that you need, like all the material possessions. And well, and I think a lot like of that. people do focus on those material possessions. Growing yeah. up, you know, your people are choosing careers before they even know really what they want to do. Like you're forced to choose a career in yeah. high school and have that career define you. And oftentimes people are choosing things based on status income because they have that long-term goal of the home they want to have the The white picket fence the vacations they want to take the car they want to drive Mm -hmm. and that's what they end up using as their values right so there's but there's actually two types of values there's what what are called ends Mm -hmm. and means oh yes so when you think about the 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 saying you know means to an end so if you ask yourself what do you value most i'll ask you that what, what do I value most? Right. You said, you know, you have a very good sense of who your authentic self is and what your values are. So if I asked you to name the f- three things that you value most, what would they be? Well, I value, I, one of the values that I have the most is being an overall good person. You know what I mean? Okay. And everything 
that I do, I want to be fair. I want to be understanding. I want to be uh, heard, basically. So there's that. And value number two. Okay. Before you move on to value number two. Okay. Why do you want to do those things? Why do you Why do you want to be a good person? Well, because I feel like everybody should be a good person, and it would be an easier world to live in if people didn't lose it, you know, in traffic and didn't, you know, just do things where they made the progression of humanity go backwards. And why would it be an easier world? If people didn't get angry. Why would it be an easier world? Right. I think people would just get along easier. Maybe it would stop all wars. Who knows? I don't know exactly, you know, but I just think that it would be a much more harmonious world if people didn't, uh, if people uh, treated one another fairly and with respect. And so that's one of my values. I like to, I naturally, I feel like treat people with respect. Although, you know, yeah, you can't you can't do that with everybody. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, there's time. You, know. you can't be a doormat either, but you need to. Yeah. So I was actually purposely putting you on the spot there by no, continuing to yeah. ask why, which is a way of sort of why? self-exploration. Yeah. Is that how I sounded when I asked? No. <laughs> why? No, I was just doing the uh, Simpsons character. Oh. Why? <laughs> My cat's breath smells like cat food. <laughs> anyway, Sorry. Uh, um, that went off the rails. <laughs> that's okay. We can just... Uh, no, but it is it is a way for self-exploration is to yeah. continue to ask yourself why. Why is yeah. that particular thing important? And, and, and as you dive down, down, then you can figure out what is the core yeah. value that is supporting why you yeah. feel those more superficial things are... And I don't mean superficial in the no, unimportant sense. No, I know sense, what you mean, yeah. Just at a, yeah. you know, a more surface level. So the, so the thing that it boiled down to me is is just to stop all wars. Yeah, that's not so bad, is it? No, I you mean, know. that's pretty profound. So you mentioned you had more than one value. What would be uh, a second value? Oh, that, that, that they all boil into that one, really. Okay. But, I, you know, in a way, but I, I, you know, I have other values too. You know, I like to, I like to try to live life each day and appreciate it. You know what I mean? Each day you appreciate the time that you have on this earth kind of thing, you know? Right. And why is that important to you? Because it makes a life feel more fulfilled. Okay. So a lot of people might answer, you know, love or family or money as being what they value most. And so out of those three things, love would be considered an end value. And so that's what you're pursuing. And you may have already achieved it and you want to maintain it, but regardless, it's a value that you have. Right. It's an emotional state that you desire. But conversely, the other two, family and money, are really means values. So they're ways to trigger other emotional states. Right. So you might say, well, what does family give you? Well, family gives me love, security, happiness. Right. Then if you look at what you truly value, then the end goals are really love, security, and happiness, Uh not love, family, and money. Yes, that makes sense. Right? It's just a way of looking at it a little bit more profoundly in depth right really. so similarly with money i could ask you what does money really mean to you what does it give you yeah so you might say you value money but really what you may value is freedom or impact or your ability to contribute or a sense of security security yeah so it's those emotional states that are truly what you value yeah not the material thing that you're pursuing that's true that makes sense it's just money can be a means to achieve a what you consider a deeper set of values. They always say money don't buy you class though. <laughs> no. <laughs> some some <laughs> people happiness. say that. So going back to ends and means values, a lot of times people are so busy pursuing those means values that they yeah. don't achieve their ends values. And it's those they ends values it. that are what fulfill you right. and make life rich and rewarding. So uh, still going through all of this is from Tony Robbins, you know, Awaken the Giant Within. And he talks about what comes up in his seminars on a consistent basis as the top 10 values. Right. So listeners, if you have a pen and want to jot these down uh, <laughs> for, for an exercise later on. But the most common ones he hears are love, success, freedom, intimacy, security, adventure, 
power, comfort, health, and passion. I had none of those. Actually, mine were all rolled up into those. <laughs> well, you may see love, mm -hmm. you know, showing respect and caring for other people and being a good person are all ways of showing other people forms of love. Right. So it's true that you probably value all of these or most of these emotions in some form, but there's definitely some that are more important than others to each individual and that you probably don't value them all equally. We basically have a hierarchy of values. So what I would... Right. And I, I loved going through this exercise. I've, I've done this myself, and I'm going to do it again to, to compare my answers to see if they've changed. But it's to take those words and put them in order of priority. So what is That's the most important idea. to you? It, the reason it makes a difference is depending on how you order them, it really does reflect who you are. So for instance, if your number one value is freedom, followed by passion, adventure, power, you're going to make different decisions in your life than somebody whose top values are security, comfort, intimacy, and health. You know, you're not going to drive the same type of car. You're not going to take the same type of vacation or right. have, maybe have the same line of work because they just, those aren't your top values. So if your value is to have power, your line of work will be very different than somebody's, you know, who just wants security. So it's a really great insight to go through listing out what your values are and prioritizing them. And once you know your top values, then you'll know what the key is to bring you the most happiness and fulfillment in your life. Because ideally, what you really want to do is to live a life that fulfills those values. If you don't, then Tony Robbins talks about the idea that you'll experience an inexplicable feeling of emptiness or unhappiness. Ooh, that so, doesn't sound fun at all. It doesn't. But if there are times that, you know, you are at a loss or feel like you have a loss of purpose, it's good to circle back to your values and look at what you're doing and how they line up with those values. And that brings me to the takeaway for this episode. Well, first off, I would suggest going through that exercise and listing out the values in order of priority for you. And you may not even have those 10 most popular as your own, but they're a good starting point. And then the next step I would suggest is, you know, sit down with your partner or maybe a friend and talk about them. It would be yeah. a really interesting discussion, particularly if you don't know, you have your spouse and see how your values line up. See if you put them into the same order. They may not perfectly line up and that's, you know, <laughs> not a problem, but it would be, you know, it's an interesting discussion and it really does give insight into why certain things might be more important to you versus to your partner or to a friend. It's always a good thing to know, regardless of how you figure it out. And then when you look at it, ask yourself, you know, do your actions, what you spend time on, do they align with those values? And if they don't, what changes can you make to help that happen? So for instance, if you've put health as one of your top values and you're not really living a lifestyle that supports that value that can create a discord or disconnect and cause, yeah. you know, cause a sense of uneasiness. And so what changes can you make to start supporting that value of health? So that's just one example. And just going through, I'll just provide the list one more time. So if you didn't catch them the first time around, the 10 most common were love, success, freedom, intimacy, security, adventure, power, comfort, health, and passion. And not necessarily in that order. That's of course, quite a poem. Everybody would prioritize them differently. <laughs> so hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight into yeah. figuring out who you are. It and gave me insight just from listening, just from learning as we did the podcast. I'm, I'm all screwed up now. <laughs> I thought I, I came into this knowing who I was, and now I have absolutely no idea. Now I have no idea. But also why it's important and how we can live a happier life. Knowing our values, knowing who we are, allows us to live an authentic life. Which absolutely. is how we achieve happiness and fulfillment, and that's what life's all about. That is what life's all about. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to tell a friend. Yeah, check us out on Instagram and spread everywhere Spread the word. Else. Definitely. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. 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 
Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out past episodes and subscribe to keep up with what's new. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, And why not leave a review? You can also follow InfoQuench on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Till, Till next time. time.